welcome to the third day of topics in hostel we have uh, professor alessandro ghigi who will continue his uh, exposition on uh, differential geometry of the torelli map thank you so uh, yesterday uh, we arrived at uh, uh, this formula Sorry. <laughs> okay. uh, we were computing uh, this uh, Oger Gaussian map and uh, we were arrived at this formula. So this was uh, the Hodge Gauss map. And uh, we also know that this uh, uh, is equal is equal to the second fundamental form of uh, the Torelli embedding. So this is the second fundamental form of uh, this submanifold. Uh, here uh, we are looking at uh, at the second fundamental form. One can look at it in uh, various uh, ways. Uh, I uh, usually wrote it uh, like this. Since these are the tangent space uh, to uh, MG. And uh, no, sorry. To N goes to the normal, which is uh, uh, the quotient. the quotient of these two tangent spaces. So this was the, my original notation. But uh, in fact, uh, since this uh, is, a, is a tensor, it is a section, uh, it is, since this is bilinear, one can uh, consider it as a <coughs> section from the, the dual of these ones. And uh, I meet up here. And uh, mm, yeah, okay. And uh, and so this uh, can also be seen as a map from this uh, space to this other one. And since uh, it's, uh, we know that it is symmetric, uh, we can think of it uh, also as uh, a map to the symmetric part, since we know that uh, it lands here. Right? So with this notation, which is uh, exactly uh, the same I'm using here, basically, we, we, we call this also rho. So it's just a different way of uh, understanding the same tensor. And uh, so yesterday we arrived at uh, this formula for uh, rho. Uh, here, this is the part that uh, uh, comes from Q. And uh, here there is this uh, extra uh, object, uh, which uh, is... Uh, <coughs> which we constructed using the, the composition, the Hodge decomposition of the curve. Okay, now um, 
we would like to to see a, a way to give a more uh, possibly more clear meaning to this uh, to this formula and for that uh, let me start with the uh, um, <coughs> something uh, different. So here we have all these tensors and tensor products. And uh, when one has uh, tensors, tensor products of uh, spaces of sections, it is useful uh, sometimes to consider uh, the product uh, manifold. In our case uh, is this surface. And uh, this surface comes uh, with uh, two projections. So P is the first one and Q is the second. And uh, if one has uh, uh, line bundles on, uh, on the curve, one can consider this uh, kind of uh, uh, square tensor product, which is a line bundle on the, uh, the product manifold, okay? And uh, uh, since uh, these are line bundles, one can uh, prove uh, that the space uh, of sections is isomorphic uh, to the tensor product of the two original spaces. So for example, the, um, <clears throat> so how is this uh, isomorphism? The isomorphism is like this. And the two, the two tensor product here are quite different. This is the tensor product of this uh, object in uh, linear algebra, while this is the tensor product of two sections. This is a section of uh, P star of L, and this is a section of Q star of M. And this tensor product is uh, uh, point by point on the on the product manifold this thing here we also denote uh, again uh, if you want uh, with this uh, square box uh, and so the, the definition this definition here is uh, this is uh, this object and this is a tensor product <coughs> on the point xy so in uh, this is something in the tensor product of the fibers. And uh, with this, uh, <clears throat> with this, for example, the multiplication map, now let's stick to the case uh, M equal to L for simplicity. So we know that we have the multiplication map that takes two sections of L and gives a section of L square, and uh, we can reinterpret this uh, using this, uh, this setting uh, in, in the following way. Uh, so here we have uh, the isomorphism with the sections of, uh, <clears throat> of this uh, bundle on the product manifold. Uh, this is exactly this isomorphism. Here we can put uh, the restriction of the bundle on the diagonal. This is just a restriction to the diagonal. And this is a, a homomorphism because uh, L so if we, if we take, uh, we can consider the diagonal embedding. And then uh, um, we see that uh, this is simply L square. This is uh, the, uh, the isomorphism induced by delta, and this commutes. So the point is that the algebraic operation of multiplication, in some sense, 
becomes something more geometrical, which is the restriction to the diagonal. Okay. Uh, now let's do this for uh, uh, the canonical bundle of the surface. So the canonical bundle of the of the curve and of the surface. So, for example, uh, yeah, uh, L equal canonical bundle. Then uh, we know that uh, canonical bundle to the surface is uh, isomorphic. This uh, and uh, this comes from the fact that uh, the tangent bundle is the direct sum of uh, the tangent bundle of the two pieces, and so getting taking the determinant one gets this. And uh, here we have uh, uh, the four one the, uh, the isomorphism above from. Uh, This is, uh, uh, yeah, mm, yeah, okay. So we have uh, this isomorphism, let's call it F. What is F? F is uh, exactly the one uh, we just uh, mentioned. So this square box here, which means that uh, this tensor product of section goes to this. Sorry, uh, okay, moment. moment. Uh, no. yeah. So if, if here I put only this square box, this square box lies here, the section of this. But I want to really something in the canonical bundle. So instead, this would be this would be this tensor product. But if I want something in the canonical bundle, I have to use wedge product. And so let's put here this. Now, this is an isomorphism. So the forms, the two forms on the surface are exactly uh, constructed from wedge product of one forms, one on each factor of the surface. Okay. But, uh, but this, uh, this surface comes with a, a natural operation, which uh, Called sigma. And this sigma is simply the map that interchanges the two factors. Okay. So this will induce a map at the level of forms, of course. On the other hand, uh, so, so this sigma star works here. But on the other hand, I have uh, a kind of symmetry also here. I can uh, uh, consider I can uh, interchange two tensors. Sorry, two, two elements inside the tensor. So I can send this tensor to this one. And I call this one sigma tilde. Okay. So uh, the funny thing is that it, these do not commute, but they commute up to sign. So here I have this isomorphism here, F. And uh, uh, instead of commuting, I have uh, this. Uh, 
This one, no? Yes, and don't understand the question. So the agent design is a composition of steps. This one, yes. Yes, yes. Yeah. No, this was uh, what I was going to, to do at the beginning, but I said that uh, if I here put this, uh, I end up here. So in something which is isomorphic, but then I have to take the isomorphic to this one. And if I want to really end up here, I need to have a form. And so I put a wedge. And with this, uh, with this uh, it's, um, since, since we have this description of the tangent space, uh, it's quite clear that it is isomorphic. So um, now I just wanted to point uh, this uh, fact that, uh, so here there is a minus sign. This is something uh, uh, extremely simple. So maybe we can actually see it. Let's make this computation. So we want, uh, to let's start from here. So this is a sigma star of the star alpha wedge q star beta. Then uh, we use, uh, uh, so sigma star is a, a morphism of, uh, of the wedge product. So this is, uh, But then uh, this is uh, P sigma star of alpha, and this is uh, U sigma star of beta. But uh, since, uh, <coughs> so sigma interchanges uh, the factors, so it interchanges the, the projections. And so this is, uh, U star of alpha, U star of beta. Now, these are one forms. So we get the minus sign. And this now we recognize as the, uh, this element F, this uh, morphism F, but which is applied not to alpha tensor beta, but to this one. So this one is this here. Okay, so something very simple, but uh, it is also true, so we cannot forget about this sign. And uh, one can, uh, in fact, uh, also check that for, uh, it's quite uh, obvious from this computation that if you take, uh, uh, instead of uh, this, uh, You take some power of the canonical bundle, then everything is similar. And in this case, the sign becomes minus one to the power n. So for example, if one takes the second power that will be needed for, uh, for the second power, the sign will be plus. Okay. Okay, so uh, what does uh, this have to do with, uh, with the spaces of section that uh, we were considering before? So the, our, our original map was a map from E2 to this space here. So um, all these, uh, both, both uh, domain and codomain are something which, uh, mm, is contained in a tensor product of sections. Sorry, not L, is K now. And 
And now this tensor product can be seen as sections on the, on the surface. Next, uh, um, so um, if we, we, can, we can set, uh, right here, Let's call uh, the plus or minus those which are invariant or anti invariant by the pullback. And then from this uh, uh, relation here, it turns out that uh, what uh, is uh, invariant for sigma star is anti-invariant for sigma tilde, which is the operation on the tensors. So this is what, right. So this is anti-invariant for sigma tilde. And these are invariant for sigma and vice versa. So. So this is a bit uh, the opposite of what one would expect, but uh, um, okay. So now this uh, uh, space uh, here, uh, sorry. The E2 was contained in the symmetric part of the tensor product. So we can uh, uh, identify it. Uh, with the subspace on the of the anti invariant part and uh, okay so now i i'm trying to interpret uh, domain and uh, codomain of the second fundamental form as spaces of sections on the surface. The domain is uh, I2 of the canonical bundle. And uh, if we use F as an uh, identification, we see it as a subspace here. Moreover, uh, what, what is E2? E2 is the set of uh, um, set of things that are in the kernel of the multiplication, but the kernel of multiplication is a restriction. So multiplication is restriction to diagonal. So in this interpretation, this becomes just the section of Kx minus delta. And this is useful because delta is a divisor on the surface, so it's uh, something quite nice. And uh, next, there is a point that, uh, that there is an elementary reason why, in fact, they uh, vanish to the second uh, order. So if something uh, uh, which is uh, here vanish to the second order, then it, uh, sorry, vanish to the first order on diagonal, then it automatically vanish to the second order. And so we are here. What about the uh, domain of the map? Uh, sorry, the, the range of the map. The range is uh, S2 of uh, this, no, sorry, 2K, oh, yeah. second power. So uh, this means that uh, by the above, we have to land uh, here. And uh, this time, since we are uh, using the second power, the, in this case, uh, F and uh, sigma star really commute. So this is simply, the invariant part for sigma. 
So at least the, uh, the two uh, spaces, uh, the target and the, the domain are, uh, have been interpreted as something on the, on the surface. This one is, uh, yeah, if, in fact, if we put this, it is actually, this is an equality. Here there is a, okay, and uh, here there is this F, which we take, uh, which is a uh, isomorphism, so we can uh, consider this as identified. This is a row, and uh, what happens here is that this one, the map here, turns out to be uh, the, the multiplication map by a, a section called eta, so M eta or eta or eta hat, let's call just, uh, buffer. sorry. Ah, ah, yeah, sure, yeah, thank you. Thank you. This is great. So uh, this means just that we take uh, a, a, an object here, the two form, and multiply it by this object. So uh, very briefly, what is this object? Ob this object belongs to this space. And uh, uh, so it is a uh, it is a a two form with a, a double pole along the diagonal, and uh, you see that uh, this one has a double zero on the diagonal. The other one has a double pole, so they cancel and they land here. And uh, since they are both uh, uh, anti-invariant, the product becomes invariant. So uh, this, this commutes, so the, the theorem, maybe, the, the theorem is basically like this commutes, and this uh, was proved uh, in uh, 2015 in a paper by Elisabetta Colombo, uh, Paola Frediani, and uh, myself, so, uh, and, and says that this commutes. <laughs> And uh, so one last word to, to explain what is this. So uh, we are we, at the beginning, we started <coughs> yesterday with uh, this form, which uh, uh, to, each, uh, to each element, uh, to each vector in the tangent space at the point. gives the normalized element here. And uh, how? Because uh, this also belongs. So what we saw yesterday is that this is, uh, can be interpreted as a line in the cohomology of uh, the curve. And uh, <clears throat> in this line, we can single out one precise element by declaring that uh, in a fixed coordinate system, this vector, the multiple of uh, the coordinate uh, vector field goes to the form which has the coefficient, the same coefficient here. So this uh, eta is now, um, This eta is a, is a map from here to here, and one can prove that it varies holomorphically. So eta in this uh, interpretation is a section of this bundle where V is a bundle that has 
as a fiber exactly this space here. And in fact, V is a bundle, which uh, uh, is uh, a direct image of this bundle on S on the surface. And uh, so, um, <clears throat> so by the projection formula, eta, it belongs to the, is a section of, uh, of this bundle here. And by the projection formula, this is also a direct image. Sorry? This is two delta. So you have KC below, you, you pull back, so it's uh, like this maybe. So you pull back and then you do the, you add the divisor, yeah, yeah right. And, and now we get this one. <coughs> and uh, so eta belongs to the H not of this direct image, but then the, uh, the, the H not of the direct image equals the H naught of the original sheaf. So in the end, eta is a, uh, eta, or if you want uh, to stress, uh, this is the one on S and this is the one on C, but uh, this one is a two form with poles on S, with, with poles on the diagonal. Okay, so at least this, this looks uh, uh, a bit nicer because this means that this map with a proper interpretation is a, is a multiplication map by a section, so something more reasonable. Although this uh, is not, uh, does not necessarily mean that uh, one can compute uh, it uh, better because uh, the problem is always that uh, this form uh, here, eta, is highly non-explicit and so, it's, uh, it's a bit hard. Okay, so uh, now I leave uh, uh, Paula. Yeah. Okay, so thank you very much for the invitation. So there is a, a change. Uh, so since uh, uh, I will uh, continue on um, talking about the second fundamental form and uh, but let me uh, So yesterday, uh, Alessandro introduced uh, uh, the notion of uh, totally geodesic submanifolds uh, of a Riemannian manifold. Uh, so let me first uh, start by giving a, a definition. Uh, consider now, um, let me give a definition and explain what I'm going to do. Uh, so let's, let us take a, Totally geodesic. Um, a variety. Of the modular space of principally polarized abelian varieties AG uh, is an algebraic a variety. Uh, let's call it Z, such that. There exists a totally geodesic submanifold of the Ziegel space such that uh, it projects on onto that. Ok, 
Okay. Uh, so the, the, the idea is uh, uh, to use uh, uh, to compute uh, the second fundamental form and to give some uh, uh, idea of the geometry of the uh, Torelli map. So recall that uh, the Torelli map this map, it is uh, uh, an immersion outside the hyperelliptic locus. And uh, mm, the idea is that the image of the, uh, of the, um, of the modular space of uh, uh, curves in AG is, uh, should, be, uh, should have a geometry which, which is quite complicated. It should be curved, should have uh, uh, very few totally geodesic submanifolds, sub sub-varieties. While we have seen already that we know that the AG has many because um, it's the quotient of uh, HG and in HG, which is a emission symmetric domain, there are a lot of uh, totally geodesic uh, submanifolds. But we expect that uh, in, uh, they don't lie in the image of the Torelli map. And this expectation is made, uh, uh, is a conjecture by Coleman and Ort. which says that for sufficiently high genus, they do not exist special uh, sub-varieties of AG. In special sub-varieties, let me call, let me call Y of AG, uh, which are, um, generically contained in the Torelli locus, the Jacobian locus, where the generically contains means that uh, Y is contained in the closure of the uh, image of the Torelli locus in AG, uh, but, and uh, uh, it intersects non uh, trivially the uh, set of um, smooth curves, smooth, smooth uh, Jacobians, Jacobians or smooth curves. Okay. Uh, special, I will not, uh, special was defined yesterday by uh, Bruno Klingler, is exactly the same uh, uh, meaning, but uh, uh, I, for us, uh, there is a characterization of special, in term, I mean, special means uh, what uh, Bruno Kling yesterday, yesterday explained. So uh, roughly speaking, there are uh, uh, components of Hodge loci in the uh, natural variation of Hodge structure given in, uh, in HG. But uh, um, for us, uh, there is a theorem by Monen, which says that special, special is a variety. Of AG is equivalent to say uh, Y special sub variety of AG is equivalent to say that Y is totally geodesic plus uh, a, an arithmetic condition and has a CM point, complex multiplication point. So an abelian variety A that means that there exists in, in Y, an abelian variety A which is CM, where CM means uh, something on the endomorphism algebra of A. I mean, I can give the definition even if I will not uh, uh, use this. I will stick to the fact that they are totally geodesic. But uh, anyway, uh, if A is the product of uh, billion varieties, uh, to, be, to say CM, it means that there exist uh, fields containing the endomorphism algebra of a Q of AI, subfields, such that the, uh, the degree of this, this uh, over Q is uh, greater or equal than the twice the dimension of AI. For example, just to be in the case uh, This is an arithmetic condition, and I'm not all, at all an expert on it, but just to say what it means, uh, 
in the case of elliptic curves, elliptic curves E tau is E tau is has uh, complex has or is complex multiplication uh, if and only if tau belongs to Q of uh, um, square root of uh, minus T where D the positive Okay, uh, so this is the conjecture of Coleman and Ort and uh, since uh, special varieties of AG are totally geodesic, uh, uh, one way to, to try to, to treat it is to use the second fundamental form, because I recall that totally geodesic means that the second fundamental form uh, vanishes, okay? So uh, let me just give a, a, an idea of uh, why we should uh, expect, uh, at least from the geometric point of view, this uh, conjecture to be true. Uh, a way of saying is, is that, uh, of C in e, is e, consider the second fundamental form, I call it rho, as uh, Alessandro was introducing before. So we have seen it is a map from the S2 of H0 of 2 Kc. So uh, recall that uh, this is S2 of uh, H1 of Tc dual. And uh, uh, what Alessandro has just proved is that uh, it is given by a multiplication, I mean, in the seen in an appropriate way, it is given by a multiplication by a non uh, uh, trivial meromorphic to form on a surface. Hence, uh, it is injective because it's a multiplication by a form. Uh, so it is, it is injective. So this is injective. Okay, this is what's just uh, proven before with the interpretation that we have just given. And uh, um, so notice that this is a vector space of dimension. So uh, to, to say this, we always, uh, to treat the second fundamental form, we always assume that the genus is a fit form because this is the only case where uh, it makes sense. Otherwise, for G equal two and uh, three, uh, the model space uh, M2 and A2 and M3 and A3 are birational, so there's nothing, there's no fundament, second fundamental form to be considered. So here, uh, this is the vector space of dimension G minus two times G minus three over two, because this is just the difference between the symmetric power. If I'm not wrong, so it should be this different. I hope it's right. Yes. And because uh, mm, it's the kernel of the multiplication map, which is the J. Okay, yeah, the curve is non hyperelliptic. And um, this vector space, uh, and this is so we have, we have uh, some, something here and uh, a vector space of this dimension. And his image, the image of this I2, is, uh, is given by quadrix. These are quadrix and elements here are quadrix in the projective space. Uh, in P of uh, H1 of uh, Tc, so which has dimension 3G minus 4. So we have a vector space of quadrix of dimension which goes uh, uh, as G square over 2 in a vector space uh, which, go, which uh, goes linearly in G. If you have a totally geodesic subvariety, what does it mean? It means that the tangent space of uh, y at the point, uh, v, I don't know, uh, x, uh, this is, uh, um, if you take any two vector in um, y is totally geodesic, if you take any two vectors here, it means that uh, if you take rho q of v tensor w, this is e zero for any uh, q in I2. So this vector space, let me call it uh, W, is uh, W is isotropic with respect to all quadrix uh, rho Q, uh, where Q is in I2. So, we, so it means that uh, the, the points are in the intersectional of all these quadrix 
And if you have a vector space, a projective space of dimension 3G minus four, and you have a, a, such a, a big number of, uh, of quadrics, you start to intersect. If you have some geometric, uh, you expect that uh, if you intersect so many quadrics, the, the uh, let's say the, the, the intersection, the base um, locus should be empty. Okay, at least if they are, uh, no, if you start to intersect quadrics and they have many, then you expect that their intersection, um, much more than the dimension of the space where you're living, you expect that intersection should be empty, at least when the genus grows uh, very high. But since we don't know anything about how these quadrics are in the projective space, uh, it's, it's hard to, to, to conclude this. But this is a, at least a geometric uh, interpretation of, the, of, this, of this conjecture. And uh, uh, now, uh, since uh, tomorrow I will, uh, um, what we did is just, uh, uh, we and other people did uh, is to uh, try to, um, at least uh, to give, uh, uh, to use the, this description that we have done of the second fundamental form to give uh, a, an upper bound on the dimension, the possible dimension of a totally geodesic sub variety uh, of AG contained in the, generically contained in the Torelli locus. Uh, but since I don't have much time, let me just uh, stick, uh, return to this conjecture. What it, uh, it is, uh, the hypothesis just G has to be uh, big, sufficiently big, because uh, in fact, uh, for low values of the genus, there are uh, counter examples, right? So it is not true. So there are examples of uh, fashion. varieties of AG, which are contained, or generically contained, in the Torelli locus. Let me just uh, briefly say who, how they are constructed. So they are basically, almost all of them come from uh, Galois covers of P1 or, or, or elliptic curves. So the first, uh, uh, so they are, uh, the first counter example, first examples, uh, these examples are all in genus less or equal than seven. And the, the first one are given by, I think the first one is Shimura, and then the young not 91. Then uh, there were other by Rode, 2009, I think. Then uh, Honen, 2010. All these are given by families of uh, uh, cyclic covers of uh, families of, uh, let's say, Jacobians of cyclic covers of P1. So we have a family of curves, which are a quotient of, of which are a cover of P1 given by a G a cyclic group. Then there are other examples constructed by Monen and Ort almost the same time, I remember, 2000, something like this, 2011, 2012, maybe, I can check. Uh, these are the same, but with G, same situation, but with G abelian. Then uh, we uh, gave some example, uh, so myself, uh, Alessandro, Gigi, and Matteo Penegini, 2015, with G non abelian but the same, uh, uh, always the families of uh, Galois covers of the projective line. And uh, mm, then uh, there are some uh, that I keep constructed together with the uh, and uh, in uh, 2016. These are uh, families uh, very similar, but families of uh, Jacobians 
of uh, Galois covers of uh, a genus one curves, elliptic curves, and then uh, Okay, and then uh, uh, this is all for uh, this kind of things, but uh, then there were other, uh, all these families are in genus at least seven and uh, they are uh, about, I think, 40 families. And here only six. And some of them actually were already realized as uh, Galois covers of P1, actually. But anyway, six here. And then uh, myself, Alessandro, and Irene Spelta, who constructed the, uh, and before this, uh, uh, sorry, before this, uh, also Grushevsky and Merler, he constructed the uh, infinite uh, uh, many um, um, special varieties as uh, uh, fibers of uh, uh, prim maps. Maybe, I don't know if I have time to enter in, into this, but unfortunately these are all uh, in uh, genus three and four, or two, three, and four. And, um, okay. Uh, and then finally, there are some recent, these are in uh, 2016, one, one example here, another is here in uh, 2020, yeah. appeared at least. So uh, then uh, um, very recently, uh, Spelta constructed uh, two examples of uh, um, of families of uh, uh, Jacobians of uh, non, uh, non Galois covers of U1 uh, which are built, which are some two examples that were constructed by Albano and Pirola to give some counter example of a conjecture of Xiao. And uh, uh, this uh, these are only, they are in A2 and A3, so they are, in this sense, they're not so interesting, but uh, as uh, these ones. But uh, the, the new fact here is that the, um, the, these uh, Jacobians have uh, endomorph extra endomorphisms. which do not come, do not uh, appear as, uh, as uh, automorphism of the curves. So uh, in this sense, uh, they are new and they, because all of the others, uh, are uh, um, the, the action of the Galois group on the curve gives an action on the Jacobian and this action gives the extra endomorphisms. And this is the way uh, they are uh, constructed. While in this case, uh, yes, they, they come from a construction coming from a Galois cover, but then uh, the families are not uh, Galois. And in fact, uh, the endomorphism algebra has uh, more uh, structure but uh, uh, they don't come in from uh, um, automorphism of the curve. And so let me just uh, uh, finish by saying that uh, all these examples uh, here, they are all constructed, uh, the, the condition that uh, uh, they, uh, satis the, the way that uh, we, we, we and uh, Monen and all the other people prove that these were given, uh, were, were given special or or uh, totally geodesic sub, uh, sub varieties is that uh, they all uh, if uh, they all uh, satisfy a condition which is the following if you have uh, a, a member of the family so a curve with a, uh, with a, which is a galois cover of uh, p1 okay the condition that this uh, have to that, that this uh, all this satisfy is the following that the mm, the dimension or 
yes, the dimension of uh, the uh, sim2 of S2 of H0 of Kc is equal to the dimension of the family. Uh, that means the dimension of uh, the tangent uh, space to the family, sorry, do, uh, invariant by the group, uh, this. So what is true is that, uh, um, so this is the, the condition. And in fact, this means uh, that the, the multiplication map This is an isomorphism. And uh, they all satisfy this condition. And uh, if you, I mean, it's, uh, if you want to have an idea why this uh, uh, should be, um, I don't know if I want to say, but okay, a, a, an idea is the following, that uh, uh, if you take uh, a family of uh, such Galois covers, uh, this could be, can be parameterized if you have a, a, a group acting on, uh, on a curve, okay? The group can be embedded in the, in the mapping class group of, uh, of, the, of the Riemann surface. And uh, you can consider in the tech Muller space the invariant part. And this, uh, by Nielsen uh, realization, the solution of Nielsen realization problem is non, uh, non empty and it's also smooth. And this parameterizes the fem not this, but if you want to, its image in, uh, in the moduli space is a parameter space for the, for the family. They have fixed this embedding and you have this. While, uh, and the tangent space to this is the dual of this uh, space, H1 of TCG uh, at the point. And uh, this is exactly uh, the tangent space to the action, the, the group G is also contained in SP GR because uh, it's, uh, it's uh, an automorphism, so it also acts, uh, um, preserves cap product. So it have, uh, the, it have, uh, it's, uh, preserves the form, the, the, and so it embeds here. And so it, this acts uh, on uh, HG, and you have this. It also acts as isometries. So this is Shimura, a special, uh, a totally geodesic if you want, a variety of HG. And what we are saying here is that uh, the Torelli map seen at this level is, a, is an isomorphism in some sense. So the image is the same, the closure of the image are the same. So it's, uh, the image is dense. So, uh, because this is a, an isomorphism. And so what we are saying is that uh, this space is totally geodesic because uh, it's, uh, the image is totally geodesic because it coincides with this uh, uh, with um, HGG. So this is the, the idea of how they are constructed. Okay, and I think the, the time is, is over. Okay, thank you. Any questions or comments? Say that the endomorphism ring of the Jacobians are generically set? Uh, yes. Almost never, never larger than set? Or uh, it says, uh, uh, let me think. Okay, the, no, uh, no, families. no in families, also positive dimensional. I, I forgot. Yes, in the, in the, I didn't, yes, positive dimensional. In the family, yes. So the only isolated. Yes, yes, sorry, I forgot in the conjecture, uh, you have to put positive dimensional. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, in fact, all these are what they are called PEL subvarieties, all these construction are given by endomorphisms. Uh, well, actually, uh, yes, yes, it's true. Sorry? G is equal to two is simple to find the, yeah. Yes. Yes, of course, they are. In fact, uh, what I say, they are not new in the sense they're new, they're many. Uh, they're new in the sense that uh, they, there, is a, um, there is a precise construction. It's a family of curves, okay? Because otherwise, of course, in A2 and A3, 
you have plenty of them. Yes, this is what I was saying. They are not so significant uh, as exam as in the sense that uh, you you know already that there exist many, but uh, uh, the construction might be interesting uh, in many cases because uh, uh, okay here okay here we also have in genus four at least okay and uh, uh, here they all, she only has in genus two or three but uh, so but uh, they. they there could exist others uh, in higher genus that we don't we not see, which are given this way. Because what what is known is actually forgot to say that uh, recently uh, Alessandro Co Conti, uh, Gigi, and uh, Pignatelli, with the using computer, uh, proved that for genus less or equal than 100, there are no other families except for the ones that we have already found. Satisfying this uh, this condition, where did they put it? This condition. Um, so, uh, but uh, this is only a sufficient condition. It's not uh, necessary. It is was proven by Monen that it is necessary if the group is, cy is cyclic. But otherwise, we don't know, we do not know. We know something in the case where the abelian group uh, is uh, the group is abelian. Some wor work of. Uh, um, uh, of um, Mohaya and Tsuo, but only for curves, for Shimura uh, special curves, to mention one. But anyway, this condition in general is not known to be uh, necessary, it's only known to be sufficient. And uh, so one might uh, try to, to do some similar construction for uh, higher genus, but uh, it, it looks, uh, these ones that she constructed only work in these, these cases. So we have no idea if they, there exist others, in higher uh, genera. Questions? If not, let's thank the speaker again.